away on the attack. 2-4-5, rest of the world defenders now being reinforced by Law, just funneling back towards the penalty area. Now it's Charlton. So far not one man beaten. That's a good send and Smith for score. Oh, what a save by Yashi. Yes, goalkeeper is an incredible character. Such quick reflex. So with a half an hour gone. No score. Coming on again, it's Payne. Three is taking that one ball down, uh, that ball down expertly. Now to Milne. Now Payne. It's too near the goalkeeper, I think. No, oh, it's been played back by Greaves. And play on, says the referee. Wasn't over the line. And it's Stefano who really hit the ball. Back to Mazapust. Stefano to Hento. To Stefano. Well, not paying off, but what superb ball control. And it's over the line for the throw in. Hento with the throw for the rest of the world. Back to Fullback Schnellinger. Stefano and Hento on the left wing. He doesn't know what to do with it quite. So he finds Stefano moves forward himself. Can Law be more in the air? Oh. No doubt that time Banks, the England goalkeeper, shouted for more to let it go. More to Smith. That's a neat headed pass to Greaves. must move the ball around much more crisply than they are doing. It's Charlton, Milne, and there's De Stefano being the general of the team. Back in defence. Now to Eastern, but still nobody been beaten, remember, in this defence. Still intact. Now, can Milne get a quick shot in? And, oh, John Santos, what a mistake. And Eastern trying a quick one. Rarely do we see John Santos make an error like that. Ah, Hento. Haven't seen him yet do one of his fantastic bursts down the wing. Norman, quick to the interception, beating Eusebio. And now with Moore to Eastham. Now to Greaves. Mill moving forward, calling for a ball. Back it goes to Eastern, and again, Yashi. Well, certainly Yashi has shown as always regarded as the world's number one goalkeeper. That's Hento. It's a beautiful ball to Law, and he handled it, used his hands, carried it forward with his arms, so free kick to England. Here comes Armfield. Pain and England moving forward again. Now through under Greaves, but that much too far ahead of Greaves. Yashin, master of anticipation. And Law to Copa. Oh, he's stepping out half asleep. Beaten by Payne. Now Greaves, a chance to slip by Pluskal. This could be goal number one. But I don't know what you have to do to get the, that ball past Yashin. Again, notice how he was six out on his six-yard line to re reduce Greaves' field of vision of the goal. Right. 
He stepped to Kuzka. Kopa. It's Mill now coming away for England. And Charlton. Oh, this could well be a thunderbolt from Charlton. Right. Poplo hard. There to stop him getting one in. Now Payne taking over. Lovely bit of body swerving by Payne. Oh, glorious to Charlton. Smith. Ball swerving away from Smith, who anyway was offside. And now the crowd think that England have got the rest of the world on the run. Certainly a superb game of football. Stefano. Stefano to Hento. And away goes the streak of lightning with the fastest fullback in England, Armfield with him and beating him. Easton to Moore. Now Mill. This time it's paid in with Mill again and England sparring for an opening, trying to entice someone to get out of position. Jalma Santos to Law. Certainly England have put in more shots than the world team has. Hento into Cope. I don't know why Hento keeps going on the right wing. He's, not, he's weak on his right foot. And the time he's tripped by Moore. I think one or two of the rest of world players not keen on this. Typical British tackling the English players are using. Now the Stefano caught offside. That's a good free kick from Moore straight to Payne on this right wing. Now to Mill. Agrees. Can Grees get another Thunderbolt shot in? Out to Charlton. And Buscal to Mazapust. Mazapust rather slow to move to it. Now Mill. Rashi just Lucks those out of the air as if they mean nothing, and Greaves was offside anyway. Out Now to Eusebio. And the intention is to take Eusebio off at half time and replace him with the great Ferenc Pushkas. Law. Walking football, the rest of the world are playing. Mazapas and Law calling, but a quick one. I think he's run, run offside, yes. Mazapus was to blame then. He didn't release the ball quickly enough. Something like seven minutes to go or half time. No score. Lots of good football. And England moving on to the attack again. Pascal to John Los Santos breaking up that one. Now, Eusebio, Di Stefano's unmarked. There's Di Stefano. And John Los Santos has moved up on the right wing. Here he comes. Bold-legged, happy character from Brazil. Oh, Eusebio Copa! <laughs> Quick reactions from these players. His centre half back is Pruskal. Out of Law. Law who must have covered more ground than anyone in this game to Chalmers Santos. Chalmers Santos to Stefano. Norman trying a sliding tackle with Stefano moving away from him. Again, a sliding tackle. One or two of the rest of the world players are looking around saying, listen, we didn't come all this way just for that. 
That's Mill. Mill not to Payne. Get England to it before half time. Get the goal they need so badly. Not this time. Right, Snellinger bringing it clear. To Cooper. But followed everywhere by Wilson. Now Milne to Easton to Greaves and Easton again. The quick passing may not. Smith to Greaves which just again a little bit too far in front of him. That's Charlton to Easton. Now Greaves but beaten by Pluskal and the referee Mr. Davidson of Scotland gives a corner. Many of these players in the rest of the world team have been picked because of their great service to international football through the years. Charlton with the corner. Perhaps it's not the strongest side. And one great disappointment was the fact that the fabulous Pele from Brazil was not allowed by his club to make the trip. Now it's De Stefano to Copa. Now Mazapust. Law around as usual. Mazapust. Oh, Norman anticipating that. That was a bad one by Mazapust. More to Charlton. Uh, Payne is teeing it up for Harpak Milne. Now it's Payne again. Ah, Law could see that coming all the way. Cooper. And more coming through with power, but Eusebio just tackling at that right second. Cooper now to the Stefano. A law. Eusebio on paying going to challenge him. What lovely footwork. We will go back to Mazabus. No, it's out to Hento. That is that these rest of the world forwards never come back to challenge when they lose the ball. Obviously, they're not going to run themselves into the ground. Chalma Santos to Law. Perhaps has been the finest player on the field in this game. Mazapus to Eusebio. Back to Pluskal. Now to Mazapus. Uh, Stefano riding the tackle. Mazapus now back to Poploha. Accurate passing. Designed to... And there, away goes the flyer. The first time we've seen him. Hento. Oh, and Law might have hurt uh, Norman. Yeah. No, Norman's getting up. Norman, of course, went down. Law put his head up. Uh, Norman went down and Law put his feet up. Well, he had to do that. Otherwise, it would have been a goal. Dangerous play by Law, so free kick to England. On the outside right, Payne, almost on half time now. We've almost played the 45 minutes. And it's Easton. He's right in front of him. Maybe a shot from Easton. And a lovely save by Yasin. He touched it. And no wonder Jimmy Greaves. Going to congratulate him. Charlton to the corner. Well, I think Yashin is going to get a fantastic reception when he goes off because the plan is that he doesn't come out for the second half. What a loss he's going to be. And Easton to Payne. And Mazapust taking no risks. Might be in anything but an ele elegant clearance, but it works. Payne to take the throw for England. Telling Law exactly where he was going to put it. And here he comes, the costliest player in England. Cost Manchester United £125,000, Law. He was bought from Turin. Oh, Eusebio's limping now. He didn't have the speed that time. A 
Milne forward to Easton. It's beginning to look as if it's going to be a goalless first half. That's the only thing this game has lacked. Goals. It's had superb football from both sides are plenty. It's Milne, England, right half. Poplaha up to Cooper and now Hanto. Now what about flying in to the second half? Is Cooper going on to the left wing? Mazapus gone into the centre forward position. Hento calling for a quick pass and there he goes. And it's corner given away by Wilson. Great tracks of the Whitley turf. Kicked up in that little shimozzle. So Hento with the corner. This could well be the last act of the first half. And it's a bad act. Uh, Mazapust. Hento well on side. So to England. He comes Armfield. Up to Easton, the referee looking at his watch. Now to the two linesmen, just to check their time. As Greaves goes through for England, the whistle goes. <laughs> Yashi just doesn't even bother about it. So the end of a fine first half with I, the crowd rising to the two teams and I think especially to Lev Yashin, the Russian goalkeeper, and walking off with Greaves. Yashin played splendidly, so has Law. In fact, so far a magnificent game of football. So we're back for the second half with four changes made in the rest of the world team. Soskic has come on in goal instead of the fabulous Yashin. Isaac Guiri of Chile has come on at right back. Baxter of Scotland has come on at left half. And Pushkas has come on at number 10 inside left. And Di Stefano quite sensibly has been left on the field. So. England have made no changes at all. No score. And now Pushkas. Everybody waiting to see whether you can get him one of those dynamic shots of his. Now Copa to Law. Notice how the players screen the ball with their body when a man comes to tackle them. Deflected off Easter, and it's Moore gets it away now to Charlton. Now Greaves, it's a bad bomb from Greaves, but nevertheless, it's still pain with it. Big difference in style to these two teams. England really taking this match seriously, had more shots of goal, but the rest of the world is trying to give an exhibition of footwork. Throw to England. Pain taking it. Oh, it's a lovely one to Charlton, and now up goes Smith. And now Greaves. And it's off the line by little Isaac Guerri, the Chilean right back. Eastham, and it'll be a corner if it goes. Yes, Isaac Guerri can't stop it. Well, so the rest of the world have had a lucky let off, let off in the first minute of each half. Charlton with the corner. England's throw. Wilson to Easton. Now here's Azaguiri, the 24-year-old Chilean. He's in the team that finished third in the 1962 World Cup. Now Jim Baxter, the Scot, to Di Stefano. Notice again how he's using his body to fend off any challenge. Now Pushkas moving in the middle, but instead it goes up to Hento. I think even the crowd want to see Pushkas have a crack at goal. Now again, Hento has been rather disappointing today. The ball too much on his right foot. And with Hento, the right foot is most definitely the wrong one. Now it's Greaves. He's got Smith with him. He's moving forward for the return. That's Greaves. Brought down by Pluskal. Oh, 
both players shaking hands in the true sporting spirit of the game. Strange sight. Pushkas going back into the defence. Nice pain from a free kick beaten by Schnellinger. Baxter back to Schnellinger. Stefano. Can Law reach it? Yes, to. Isaguiri. Pushkas close to his Pushkas. Famous Hungarian international, then 1956, moved to Spain. Henko and Baxter getting in each other's way, so it's Payne finding Greaves. Oh, what about a shot, Greaves? Nice, they're laying it too long. Quick covering dunk. Defenders. That's Charlton. Milne to Charlton. Maybe it's Milne to Greaves. Can he get through? But again, this quick tackling. And he's getting his popular hard. Now Pushka to Copa. There's Pushka's close to him. Way across to Jim Baxter, who always plays with his shirt outside his pants. No matter where he plays. Baxter to Pushka's. Well, it's the left foot we've got to watch for. And Copa a bit slow off the bar. Pushka's already telling, telling his colleagues where they should have been to make that telling pass. That's Charlton to Greaves. Here comes Bobby Charlton, great favourite with the England fans. That's a nice centre. Oh, and Suskis almost in trouble. Soskic finding Di Stefano with his clearance. Although Pushkas is on the program now at inside left, he plays the orthodox centre forward game. He's the real striker. Up comes Isaguiri. Isaguiri now to Di Stefano. A great shot of going on two of you from Bobby Moore, but it's Isaguiri coming through. And Pushkas. Trying to move on for that one to flick it into the net. As little Gillian won't be shaken off the ball. It's Law and Moore having to make the best shot of the half that has gone towards Banks. Charlton again. That's Jim Baxter. Jim Baxter, this controversial Scottish player. Picked for this team, but dropped by Scotland for their last international match. Now here he comes, roly poly Pushkas, the man we've got to fear, but more caring nothing for his reputation. Uh, Law. Law to Di Stefano. Copa. Oh, it was a carelessly made one from Copa. And a power behind it. Charlton to Greaves, back to Payne. It's the typical English pass, a cross-field one to a strong runner like Charlton. Lovely ball. Oh, Smith coming from behind Pluscar there, nice known to Charlton. And back to beat Smith to it. Oh, good old-fashioned British shoulder charge, but... Smith has been penalised for it. Now, the reason for that is the crowd are booing, but the referee is quite right. Neither of them were playing the ball, and you can only charge a man uh, if you or he are playing the ball. The ball wasn't even within playing distance when the charge came. Di Stefano. Law moving forward. Instead, out to Hento. Dennis Law again. This rest of the world team almost like a theatrical exhibition of the arts and crafts of football. Baxter to his fellow Scott Law. Now here comes Isaac Weary again. And Norman getting it clear. Isaac 
Isaac Weary already got into the game a lot. Oh, he's done some fine work, too. Baxter. Baxter's got happy memories of Wembley. He's got scored two goals for Scotland here last April against England. Agrees to Smith. Oh, lovely return pass. Agrees, he's going to get it. He scores. And Wembley, no goal. The referee has flown for a free kick. No goal. And listen to the crowd. I've never heard such booing at Wembley, but the referee had blown for the foul on Greaves before Greaves recovered, and once he's blown, he can't take it back. Well, of course, the crowd are disappointed that a goal has been rubbed out for England, but there's nothing else the referee could do as he saw Greaves stumble and fall. How was he to know Greaves was going to get up? Now that'll give them something to argue about in the clubs and the pubs tonight. Ah, here comes Law. Oh, that's a bad one from Dennis Law. Very unlike him. Now oh, the crowd are even more behind England than ever. And really, do we hear a Wembley crowd cheering England on like this? Now it's pain. Payne, a very clever player, even though he plays for Second division club, Southampton. Oh, what's the glorious one of Pluskal there? Now Milne and it's Baxter getting it clear. But I'm more on the pressure back on the rest of the world. Charlton. Greaves and Dennis Law beating him. Now Easton. And the calm, cool Alfredo Di Stefano. Argentinian by birth, now playing for Real Madrid. Pushkas are oh, penalised for obstruction, but that is a thing which goes on on the continent. He was screening the ball with his body. That's a free kick to England, and it's Milne. Milne out to Payne. Soskic out to Isaac Weary. Playing ten minutes of the second half, no score. It's Stefano. Puskas moving onto the right wing, a strange position for him. Now, here comes Mill. Payne, once again, England being allowed to carry the ball forward. That's a lovely centre. And a brilliant bit of heading by Pluskal. Sensible pass by Law to Copa. There's a query. As again, we still have this severe language difficulty between these rest of the world players. Of course, they've never played together before in their lives. Or at least in the forward line at the moment. We have got three Real Madrid players, Di Stefano, Pushkas and Hento. Now it's Law, Pushkas moving into the middle. Oh, he wanted the ball pushed through to him then. Uh, Di Stefano. Uh, Alfield quickly and uh, Pushkas. Right here, remember Pushkas for that fabulous display he gave for Hungary against England ten years ago. Mill out to pain and England coming back. And suddenly playing his best game for England. Uh, Easter. And now Smith, but beaten by Poploha. World defence still very cool under pressure. That's Armfield. Well, they 
certainly proved their goalkeepers great. On the continent, they already had Yashin of Russia playing like a man inspired, and now Soskic of Yugoslavia. A Baxter to Pushkas. In moves Hinto. Eyes covered, so that's why Pushkas held on to the ball. More to Charlton. That pass was telegraphed. Snellinger could see it coming all the way. Throw to England. Mill. A lovely ball to Green, straight to his feet, notice. Smith should have moved out of the way then. Oh, indecision there between Snellinger and Popluha. Now Pushkas, and away he goes. Fabulous player, 37 years of age and 87 caps. Some of Pushkas's caps, most of them, of course, for Hungary, but some of them for Spain. And Sela is coming on. Copa, I think, will go off. Riera is signaling Copa to come off the field, and Sela of West Germany is going on. Now ah, it's Easter to Greaves, and again the foot of Pushka. Now Sela is a dynamic centre forward. 26. And so we've seen all the 16 rest of the world players. Uh, Hento and his Sealer in action straight away. We for Hento and Moore with a fine tackle of his. Normally, in competitive football, there are no substitutes in friendly internationals. Oh, what's a beautiful pass out of Sela. Out of Baxter. Out of Stepano. Pushkas not as dangerous on the right wing. In friendly internationals, normally a goalkeeper can be changed any time if he's injured and one other player up to the 44th minute. This is a special game. That's up with Milne. Now to Greaves. Payne to Smith. England's throw. Match with Milne. Greaves. Baxter there for the rest of the world. Sealer. Back to Law. Sealer is essentially a striker. Law to his fellow Scott. Baxter and back again. Up to Snellinger. To Hento. Not really seen him at top speed yet. Watching him very carefully because I'm feeling it's very fast as well. Oh, Baxter, that's the return pass that Hento wants, and there's Milne with him, having anticipated that move. Hento with the throw to Baxter. Schnellinger to Law. Oh, I thought for a moment the bench was going to let it go. Then he seemed to change his mind. If he hadn't have done it, would have crept in by the far post. That's Charlton. Uh, this is Milne. Payne. Free 
back on the edge of the penalty area. Fuscal is putting his foot in front of Smith and giving him a push. Overreaching for the ball, obviously. Now Greaves going to take the free kick. Or is it Mel? Now Greaves. And it's out with Charlton. No one. Easton and Law didn't know where the ball was then. And he hit them like that. Now Mill. And De Stefano back and notice how he brings the ball under control immediately. This man is a real footballing artist. Law. Now Hento. Pushkas. Again the sliding tackle which they don't like. Oh, Baxter to Isaguiri always moves up in support of his forwards. Baxter. Oh, lovely one-two wall pass again. Ah, Sela. Ah, it's no use trying to dribble through. Sela perhaps will do it because West Germans play a very similar style of football to the English. minutes of the second half gone no score Greaves now oh Charlton taking it too far a Baxter to Pushkas Schnellinger now forward to Di Stefano it's Pushkas and off goes Hento He's got Sealer in the middle. That's all. Oh, he's on his right foot, which is no good. Now Mill pushing it up to Easton. Greaves. Again, notice there's no attempt to challenge in midfield. Because if you challenge there and you miss the tackle, then there's a gap in your defense. A Mill moving up a lot in attack. You notice the inaccuracy that comes a long pass in front of a man, the delay before he can get it. A foul by Schnellinger. Going over the wall, bringing pain down. Oh, pain is going to take the free kick. Stefano flicking it forward to Pushkas. Laws up with Pushkas, so to his sealer on the right wing. Ah, oh, that was telegraphed by Law. Easy for Moore to come into the interception. Now Milne. Where across to Payne. Smith. That's a lovely chip to Greaves. And a goal on Payne. Payne has scored. Payne has scored for England after 65 minutes. So England take the lead 1-0. Now then, how seriously do the rest of the world take that setback? We'll just have to wait and see. That's Hento calling for his men to go up, but that much too near the goalkeeper. No danger from centers like that. Now England really with their tails up. Charlton to Breeze, he's got Popla with him. Throw into England. And the team manager of the um, rest of the world side, Riera, the Chilean, 
shouting instructions from the touchline. Eastham for England. Trip by the Scotsman Baxter on the Englishman Eastham. Out of Armfield. This goes the show. Full back shouldn't try shots at goal. Out with Baxter. Baxter looking rather slow, moving to the ball. Now Greaves. He's got in the middle. He's got Smith waiting to the far side. Charlton close to him. It's Charlton. Nellinger in trouble with that one. We have goal kick unless Payne can reach it. No, it's well over the line. Goal kick to the rest of the world now. Isaguere to Baxter. What's a bad ball to Hento. Now Armfield, the English captain. An equally bad pass. Now, Law. Now across to Schnellinger, now to Hento. This is Baxter, loves to come on the attack. He's essentially an attacking wing half. It's a bad one to eat, uh, to Law, but he made it a good one, and now Pushkas. To Law. Ah, bad return pass by Law. So away you come England now. And some lovely football breeze up there waiting for it, but instead, out to the right wing, my pain. Ah, uh, Di Stefano. Hento to the Stefano and away goes this jet propel wingman and look at Armfield catching him up that's a lovely one and Wilson who now sailors a pushkas and it's Wilson again who comes across but how slow sealer was one thing you might notice in the second half is that both Di Stefano and sealer are wearing number nine that's because sealer was originally intended to replace Di Stefano after the half-time interval Baxter. Oh, Hento didn't anticipate that move by Di Stefano. Ah, it's way out for Charlton. To Greaves. Oh, Greaves. Smith. Oh, what a save by Suskich. Corner to England is Pluskow getting it clear. Now, Uwe Sela back to Pluskow and now Di Stefano, the other man wearing number nine on this rest of the world side. Pushka's moving over to inside left. Back to Di Stefano. Now Law. Oh, Pushka's calling for the through one, but of course Law doesn't understand Pushka's moves. They've never played together before. Now Pushka's, can he get it to his left foot? He can, it can be dangerous. Charlton across to Milne. Now Payne, and that's Smith going on to the right wing to help Payne. And back to Milne, but it's rather lucky that England retained possession then. Smith, a neat one, back to Greaves. What about a long-range shot, Jim? It's delayed it a little too long. Charlton to Easton, rather slow off the mark. Says Isaac Weary getting it up to Sealer. Now to Law. Sealer. Baxter. Stefano, across to Hento. 
at it. Baxter. Oh, Baxter, terribly inaccurate with that chip. A pain finding Charlton. It's a long one meant for Smith, but Poploha there now. Schnellinger to Law. The rest of the world don't seem to be worried about being one goal down. They're still strolling through the game, still content to give an exhibition of their footwork. Pushkas back to Isaac Weary. Hinto. Mill. Um, Pushkas showing a little bad temper going in with his studs showing. Arfielder Smith. All the linesmen. Um, I think the linesman made a mistake then and realized it because he seemed to change his decision as soon as he flagged Smith offside. So I don't think Smith was. So. That's Law. A shot and a goal kick. Here's Law to Baxter. Stefano to Law. This could be the equalizing goal. Yes, to Stefano. No. That's a lucky let off for England. So there's a corner to the rest of the world. Going to be taken by the right back, Isaac Guerri. We don't often see that. Oh, what looked like hands. Well, the re reverie, fortunately, was behind um, Moore, so got away with it. That's Smith to Charlton. Maybe a crack from Bobby Charlton. Corner must have been deflected by Pushkal. Corner to England. That's a nasty one, Smith. Brilliant effort by Bobby Smith. Until yesterday was very doubtful for this game. He got injured playing for Tottenham Hotspur last Saturday. And they say until yesterday it was doubtful whether he'd be fit enough in time to play in this game. Now it's more to Easton. Sealer going into challenge, but notice how Easton will turn his body so that Sealer can't see the ball. To Milne to the outside right, Payne. Pluska, but Easton get putting it back to Charlton. Maybe a go on the outside. Well, he didn't, then he lost it, so it's now with Sealer. Oh, the long ball to Pushkas. No, it's a short one to. Stefano. Up comes Baxter with Payne chasing him. Uh, Law to Isaac Weary. Oh, that's the first mistake he's made. Charlton to Moore. Now to Easton. Now Greaves. Easton again. Greaves and Charlton in the middle. So too is Smith. Is Charlton. Oh, lovely one to Greaves. Oh, a fine move by England. A lovely move. And a fine save because that was moving that shot of Greaves. It's now Easton. And oh, Law should have taken that one. Milne to Payne. Getting the pressure on the rest of the world side. And Payne finding Easton very accurate with his cross field passes. 
Lovely football by England. Under 15 minutes left for play. England leading the rest of the world by one goal to nil. That's Hento. Pushkas in, inside of him. Shattered all the time by Norman. As Pushkas couldn't turn quickly enough. Ah, oh, Norman's given away a corner. with the corner for the rest of the world. There's Pushkas and it's an... No, it's a goal kick. Referee right on the spot. Now, Pushka taking it up for Law. Law now up to... Sealer. Oh, what's too high for Pushkas? Anyway, Pushkas was pushed. He's, oh, the England defenders are lucky to get away with that. That's Popluha. To, to Law. Again, that screening of the ball by the body. Law does it so well. It's Pushka to Stefano Pushka moving forward. You can rarely see him move forward. He's purely defensive. Sealer should have brought it down, not flicking it up. There's the Greaves. Oh, it's too far forward for Bobby Smith. Our law, lots of room in which to work. Ah, not like Dennis Law to make a pass like that. But my what's about 11 or 12 minutes left for play. 1 0 England lead. Here they come on the attack again. It's Payne. Greaves is on the right wing. Here comes Greaves. Easily cut off by Baxter. Now up to Hento. I if he would. Hunt Turner was running back before Hento really let out the clutch, so to speak. I feel a very, very experienced fullback. Won't be shaken up, but won't, of course, go into the tackle in a situation like this. So we are forcing backs, forcing Hinto to play it back like that. Now Pushkas. And out to Law, De Stefano. Oh, no one saying that. Now, away you go, England. And it's Smith, Smith into Charlton. Up to Payne. Oh, that's a bad one from Payne. He's quite in the right position. Still get again because there's no one there to challenge him. That's a nice clearance by Soskic. Yugoslav goalkeeper up to Sela. Now Pushkas. Law moving down the middle. Can Pushkas see him? Oh, it's a beautiful ball. Now Law surely will. Yes, he's equalized. A glorious goal scored by Dennis Law over that pass of Puskas. And there's the Hungarian men of Scots embracing each other to celebrate this equalizing goal. Fine bit of play. There's no answer to football of that class. Puskas timing his pass. And Law taking up the right position and then remaining cool and calm when Banks came out. So one goal each. I don't think anybody's going to grumble if this celebration game does end in a draw. Now Mill, Mill, beautiful one out to Payne. Baxter, hands a penalty! Well, Baxter's a lucky boy. 
Now, the law states that it must be intentional hands, and the referee, of course, is interpreting the rule as he sees it. Probably thought that that ball struck Baxter on the hand rather than Baxter played it. Where I'm sitting, you see that Baxter moved his hand to guide the ball. So, anyway, Baxter now inside to Pushkas. Uh, up comes Law, fitting that Law should have got the goal for the rest of the world. He's played so well. Law to Baxter. Wilson has been playing so well, and notice how Moore ran to take up position to help Wilson to pass the ball and get his team out of a bit of trouble. Now he's him into Charlton. This is what Charlton likes. Dart down the middle and maybe a shot. Oh, he's hit the post. Out to Payne. Can Greaves get up? Well, there's one thing about Jimmy Greaves. He's a very, very fine footballer, one of the best in the world. But he admits himself that he's no good at heading a ball. This is Pushkas. Law coming up on oh, Pushkas' is right. Here's Law. Into Sealer. Now oh, Pushkas. Well, the crowd went ooh, but I'm certain that Banks must have called for that ball. Otherwise, Arthur would never have taken the risk of letting it go. Now, Charlton getting it from Eastham. In comes Bain. And Schneller coming in with a good old-fashioned English-type tackle. The law finding Sealer. Di Stefano, Pushkas in the position he loves. I thought there might have been a through ball to Pushkas then. But Wilson watching Pushkas everywhere. Pushkas not standing still for one second. And in comes Hento. Well, a little bit of luck on England's side that time. Still, luck's gone the other way, and I think Armfield is hurt. He's running behind the line. With six minutes left, one each. Now Greaves. Oh, it's a beauty! <laughs> Hit the bar! Or the post, I wouldn't like to say which. The England trainer now uh, attending to Armfield is off the field. Now Pushkas. Here comes Hento. So we're going to miss Armfield now. Inga Sela and a goal kick. So this is certainly a match that neither team deserves to lose because both of them have played very fine football, both with different objects in view. England have tried to be more go-ahead and progressive than the rest of the world, who really felt they had to come here and show off their individual skills. Now, Charlton. Oh, a lovely one. Oh, Suskitz, what a mistake. Leads the score. Just when I say that neither side deserves to lose, what happens? A tragic mistake by Soskic. I think the first goalkeeping error of the game, dropping that ball from um, Charlton and Greaves, able to get that easy goal to put England 2-1 in the lead with only five minutes left for play. Uh, Kento. That's no use hitting push because you've got to hit the back of the net. Armfield, I think, is suffering from cramp. The trainer is massaging his calf. That's Sealer to Baxter. Mm. Well, rebounds count. Out to Hento and his mill has got to look after him. Notice three men there. Oh, no! It's offside, anyway. 
offside. Stefano. Well, I think Wembley is going to hear its biggest ever roar when the final whistle goes, if England are still in the lead. Here come the rest of the world again. Let's put to get the equaliser. And it's outside right against outside left and the outside right. Payne winning the duel. And overdo it, son. Well played. Now Pushkal to Schnellinger. Oh, Smith and Law having a bit of trouble with each other. <laughs> now they're all fouls, but... And Arfield is coming back again. And Snellinger takes the free kick. Well, the crowd shouted, hands. The linesman who could see it must have ruled accidental hands. That's a good ball from Sealer to Baxter. No one coming close to him. Oh, De Stefano thought the floor was back there. Law darted through like a just like a hair. Now it's pain. Final whistle will go in about a couple of minutes. Baxter to Law. Now oh, Baxter. Now Hento. Now I wonder whether Arfield knows he's Limping is probably in pain with that cramp. Now, Pushkas. Neat anticipation by Easton coming back to help his defence. And the crowd really rising to the Zygmunt team. It's a fine performance to beat the star studied 11. So, and there's the whistle. It's all over. England have won by two goals to one. That is sporting contest a pleasure to watch it the crowd on the feet temperatura de 26 graus no Rio de Janeiro apesar do céu encoberto tempo muito bom e a bola rolando no Maracanã lançamento longo de Aladim Júnior do Curitiba Gilson Paulino Tita Zico Aladim Gardel Andrade vai levando o Adílio uh. Nunes. Está bem bloqueada a defesa curitibana. Júlio César. Nunes. A marcação de falta pelo árbitro gaúcho Carlos Rosa Martins. Falta que favorece a equipe do Curitiba. Estamos nos primeiros instantes do Maracanã, zero Curitiba, zero Flamengo. Semifinal, 25 de maio de 1980. E a falta contra o Flamengo lá pela ponta direita. Falta cometida em cima do lateral direito, Wilson. Júnior. Rapidamente, Júlio César Atita. Levou vantagem. Correta a marcação da arbitragem. Carlos Alberto, bom lance. Fazendo vibrar pela primeira vez a torcida no Flamengo do Maracanã. Chute de Carlos Alberto, lateral direito, que passou bem próximo ao poste direito do goleiro Moreira do Curitiba. Criança no esporte, criança forte. 
E o Zico está sentindo a coxa. A chance lá na ponta direita da de Wilson. Jogadores do Curitiba estão reclamando e saiu o cartão amarelo. Exatamente para Escurinho. Jogadores do Curitiba pretendiam a marcação de uma penalidade máxima. Está aí o bolinho formado em torno do Zico. Ele levou um tostão na coxa esquerda e está sendo atendido e massageado neste momento. Momento perigoso para o Flamengo. Cobrança de falta. Escurinho. O médico do Flamengo faz sinal de que deverá haver substituição. Que Zico não tem mais condições. Está aí. Não é uma boa notícia para as torcidas do Flamengo. Pelo contrário, uma má notícia. Seu principal tá jogador sem condições de jogo. Zico. Não deu, né, Zico? Ele pede para esperar mais um momento. Aí o Zico saindo. Gilson Paulino. Escurinho. Zico Luiz não. Freire. Vai sair o gol. Gol! É do Curitiba no Maracanã. Zero no marcador. Na marca de 20 minutos. Primeiro tempo. Wilson Tadei. 1 a 0 Curitiba. Veja outra vez, na saída do goleiro, a entrada de Wilson Tadrez, Tadei encobrindo o Raul. Está aí o Reinaldo. A falta marcada favorece ao Flamengo. Tomando posição para a cobrança da falta, Tita. Longa distância, bateu forte. Uma bela intervenção do goleiro Moreira do Curitiba. Cria o esporte, criança forte. Adílio Andrade. Boa bola para Tita. Nunes. Perdeu. Perdeu no momento. O sobrepasso, Nunes ficou completamente perdido no momento de chutar contra o gol de Moreira. Júnior. Adílio. Veja outra vez. Aí está. Pela ponta direita, Reinaldo. Ganhando o tiro de canto. Flamengo vai perdendo por 1 a 0 e a torcida não para de incentivar a sua equipe no Maracanã. Cobrança de Reinaldo. Sobra de Júlio Adílio. Tita. A sobra de Wilson lá pela, pelo setor da direita. Escurinho. O contra-ataque do Curitiba é muito perigoso. Luiz Freire. Recuperação de Rondinelli. Levantamento para a escurinha, perigoso. Raul. Marca. Vamos acompanhar com atenção esse ataque do Flamengo. Tita. Adílio Júlio César. Boa finta, levantando a torcida no Maracanã. Apenas o tiro de meta para o Curitiba. São as emoções da Taça de Ouro. No Maracanã, 1 um Curitiba, 0 Flamengo. No Beira Rio, 1 um Atlético, 0 Internacional. Tentativa do Curitiba, viu? Som Tadei, bom lance. Leomir. Na tela direito, Wilson. Luiz Freire. Cruzando para trás, perigoso. Aladim. Gol! Aladim para o Curitiba. Um... E 
vai acontecendo aquilo que ninguém esperava, pelo menos aqui no Maracanã, entre os torcedores do Flamengo. Você vê de outro ângulo, de trás do gol, o golaço de Aladim. E perna esquerda, num voleio, uma bomba incrível. 2 a 0, Curitiba. Olha o lance de Nunes. E há uma vibração incrível no banco do Curitiba. Mário Juliato agora já está perdendo bem mais esperança. Como? Já dá para ter bem mais esperanças agora de virar esse resultado. É, eu sempre tive esperança. Esperança de que meu time possa apresentar um bom futebol dentro do campo. Vai mudar alguma coisa em termos de disposição tática, ritmo dos jogadores? Alguma coisa uh, em cima desse placar de 2 a 0, Mário? Não, acho que não é necessário. Aplicação tática da equipe curitibana é de impressionar. Aladim. Gilson Paulino. Bola de Tita. E o que traz mais preocupação à torcida do Flamengo é que Zico deixou o gramado exatamente aos 20 minutos deste primeiro tempo. Contundido na coxa direita. E a contusão dele não foi grave. Segundo o médico Célio Cotec, do Flamengo, Zico foi retirado de campo mais por precaução. Saída de bola e favorecendo a equipe do Flamengo. O Bandeirinha entendeu que a marcação de falta seria melhor. O Aladim está reclamando. Está dizendo que foi lateral. Cobrança de falta para o Reinaldo. Nunes na cabeçada. Adílio chegava. Wilson Tadei foi quem tirou. Só Ronaldo. Júnior. De presente de graça para Luiz Freire. Contra-ataque do Curitiba. Escurinho. Wilson. Quando desce, desce sempre com perigo a equipe paranaense. Wilson. Você já viu passar o Wilson Tadei. Aí está. Cruzamento. Eu! <risos> 2 a 0, Curitiba no Maracanã. Nunes. Bom lance. Já entrou na área. Pode até fazer. do Maracanã Nunes 32 minutos e meio primeiro tempo diminui para o Flamengo uma bola lançada em profundidade ficou ele, Nunes e o goleiro Moreira aí ficou fácil no canto esquerdo do gol curitibano dois Curitiba um Flamengo jogaço no Maracanã ganhando por 2 a 0, se fizesse mais um gol e mantivesse o placar, aí está, Caú, sobra de Wilson, antecipação de Júnior, completando então, se o Curitiba fizesse mais um gol e mantivesse o placar, estaria classificado para a final do Campeonato Brasileiro. Agora com 2 a 1, um, Curitiba tem que fazer mais dois gols se quiser chegar lá. Luiz Freire. E o Júlio César realmente não tem condições de continuar. Nunes. Vai entrar um outro jogador na equipe do Flamengo. É Anselmo, camisa 16. Andrade. Cruzamento perigoso, Tita, Nunes. Gol! Nunes para o Flamengo, empatando no Maracanã. Vibração incontida na arquibancada. Cruzamento da esquerda de Andrade. A 
sobra para Tita Nunes e o gol de empate do Flamengo. Aos 36 minutos no primeiro tempo, dois Flamengo, dois Curitiba. E elas ficam ainda mais difíceis para a equipe paranaense. E o técnico Mário Juliato fez um sinal para Gilson. Técnico Mário Juliato da equipe do Curitiba, bastante preocupado agora no túnel do Curitiba. Ele acaba de fazer um sinal para o lateral Gilson, que vem pegar a bola aqui junto ao banco, para que o time do Curitiba marque por pressão no campo do Flamengo. Wilson Tadei. No meio do caminho, Andrade. A fita em cima de Gardel. É Carlos Alberto, a bomba. de Carlos Alberto para o Flamengo é o terceiro gol do Flamengo no Maracanã Carlos por uma jogada individual toda dele arrancou lá do meio campo veio fintando, Gardel ficou abatido e a bomba ainda tocou em Moreira três para o Flamengo dois para o Curitiba reação impressionante do Flamengo no Maracanã na marca de 38 minutos e meio no primeiro tempo. E agora a torcida do Flamengo já pode comemorar com toda a força. Apesar de que ainda tem mais um tempo, mais 45 minutos. Aí o Cláudio Coutinho. Acho que nem ele esperava essa reação. Especialmente no primeiro tempo. Porto Alegre continua 1 um para o Atlético, 0 para o Internacional. Cobrança de Aladim. Wilson. Laú. Criança no esporte. Criança forte. De novo o Flamengo Nunes. Melhor para o Curitiba. Luiz Freire. Marcando a distância Rondinelli. Subiu escurinho. Melhor para Tita. minutos 30 segundos, 4 e meio para terminar o primeiro tempo 3 para o Flamengo, é verdade para o Curitiba o Flamengo estava perdendo por 2 a 0 foi seguro, agora o Anselmo levou vantagem, pode até fazer o quarto tá valendo foi bloqueado pelo goleiro Moreira a jogada segundo a arbitragem foi legal tanto do Anselmo quanto do goleiro Moreira, que acabou contundido mas era o quarto gol que estava sendo pintado aqui no Maracanã. A verdade é que depois do segundo gol do Flamengo, a equipe paranaense se desarvorou totalmente no gramado. Perdeu totalmente aquele sentido tático de equipe que vinha mantendo, pelo menos até a primeira meia hora de jogo. Gilson Paulino. Luiz Freire. Wilson. Aladim. Lá pela ponta direita. Raul absoluto no lance. E o contra-ataque do Flamengo com Tita. Nunes. Adílio. Anselmo. Ação do impedimento pelo Bandeira Vermelha, Luiz Valdir Louru. E aí está o final do primeiro tempo no Maracanã. Três para o Flamengo, dois para o Curitiba. Criança no esporte, 
criança forte. Vamos para o segundo tempo de Flamengo e Curitiba no Maracanã. Flamengo 2 para o Curitiba. Vamos para o segundo tempo de Flamengo e Curitiba no Maracanã. Três para o Flamengo, dois para o Curitiba. Nunes. Com certa dificuldade lá pela ponta direita. Evolução a Nunes. Alongou demais, mesmo assim é dele. A marcação de saída de bola favorecendo a equipe paranaense. Instantes iniciais do segundo tempo no Maracanã. Três para o Flamengo, dois para o Curitiba. Resultado que vai no Flamengo no Campeonato Nacional, que partiria assim já no meio de semana, quarta-feira, para decisão contra o Internacional ou Atlético Mineiro. Com grandes chances para o Atlético que vai vencendo ao Internacional por 2 a 0. Meu Tadei. Boa finta. Luiz Freire. Quem tirou foi Reinaldo. Aladim. Gilson Paulino acabou saindo com bola e tudo. Criança no esporte. Criança forte. Posição do goleiro Raul Júnior. Aí boa chance para Nunes. Anselmo. Adílio. Reinaldo lá pela ponta direita. Vai fechando com perigo. A fita sobre Gilson Paulino. O cruzamento. Foi maravilhosa a defesa do goleiro Moreira. Depois de Nunes tentar a tentativa também de Tita. Por muito pouco o Flamengo não faz o seu quarto gol. Veja aí. A vantagem de Reinaldo, o cruzamento, a cabeçada de Nunes e a defesa de Moreira. Wilson Tadei. Curinho Leomir É bom que se diga que nem Flamengo Nem Curitiba fizeram substituições para a fase final Verdade que o Flamengo não pode fazer mais nenhuma Já fez as duas permitidas E as duas por motivo de contusão Primeiro Zico Depois Júlio César Muito perigosa contra a meta do goleiro Raul. Barreira de cinco homens da equipe do Flamengo. Cobrança de Aladim. Leomir. Cabeçada. Adílio tocando pela linha de fundo. É escanteio para a equipe paranaense. Estamos com cinco minutos no segundo tempo. Três, Flamengo, dois, Curitiba. Gardel e Escurinho na área para a cabeçada. Raul. Soltou e voltou a agarrar. Deixando com o coração na boca a torcida do Flamengo. Criança no esporte. Criança forte. O contra-ataque do Flamengo. Tita. Nunes. Grande bola para Anselmo. A sobra. Para Adilho de perna direita. Passou rente, rente o poste direito de Moreira. 
Mas uma boa oportunidade desperdiçada pela equipe do Flamengo. Vale a pena até ver de novo. Por trás do gol. Escurinho. A briga com Eduardo. Escurinho livre. Marcada a falta. Wilson Tadei. Luiz Freire, bom lance. Ganhou na dividida. Pode cruzar para trás. Leonir, tirando Rondinelli. Evitando que poderia ser um gol de empate na equipe do Curitiba. Merecendo até os aplausos do goleiro Raul. Foi realmente um lance complicado. No Curitiba prepara-se João Carlos, camisa 15, ex-ponteiro direito do Grêmio de Porto Alegre para entrar na equipe. Três para o Flamengo, para o Curitiba, o placar ainda é o do primeiro tempo. Temos 12 agora do segundo, Andrade. Banho do Luiz Freire. Melhor para Marinho. Júnior. No corta-luz para Anselmo Júnior. Um bom cruzamento. Moreira antecipando na chegada de Tita. Permanecendo estes resultados, a vitória do Flamengo sobre o Curitiba e a vitória do Atlético sobre o Internacional, o Atlético estava vencendo por 2 a 0 no primeiro tempo, a final seria no Maracanã entre Inter e Atlético, entre Flamengo e Atlético, já que o Flamengo tem mais pontos ganhos que o Clube de Minas. A partir de quarta-feira seria então no Mineirão e domingo no Maracanã, entre Flamengo e Atlético Mineiro. A verdade é que de qualquer maneira vamos ter grandes emoções essa semana na decisão do Campeonato Brasileiro. Até pela quarta-feira, terminando tudo no domingo. Boa jogada de Tita. Aí fechando com perigo. E a falta marcada pelo árbitro gaúcho Carlos Rosa Martins. Falta de cartel em cima de Tita. No Curitiba sai Almir, camisa 5. Entra João Carlos, camisa 15. É a primeira substituição feita pelo técnico Mário Juliato da equipe bananaense. Caiu Almir. Um pouco mais atrás está o Tita. Aliás, o Anselmo. Quem bateu foi Reinaldo. Uma bomba. Criança no esporte, criança forte. O Beira Rio continua dois para o Atlético, zero para o Internacional. Um resultado excepcional para a equipe mineira. Nunes. Tita. Ainda do Flamengo. Muita gente para ajudar. Adílio. Abertura para Júnior. Recuperação de Wilson pelo Curitiba. João Carlos. Esta alteração na equipe do Curitiba, a entrada de João Carlos e a saída de Almir, deve abrir um pouco mais o meio de campo do Curitiba e reforçar o ataque. E aí está a grande arrecadação desta tarde aqui no Maracanã. 9 milhões 265 mil 630 cruzeiros. Público pagante de 87 mil 934 pessoas. Dezesseis minutos, segundo tempo, dois, Curitiba, três, Flamengo. Boa tabelinha, Andrade, Adílio, Adílio, Tita, Adílio outra vez. E a posição ilegal de Nunes, aliás, dois jogadores impedidos. Nunes e Reinaldo. O 
Flamengo. João Carlos aparando, Gardel. Para ataque do Flamengo, Nunes. Adílio pode até bater para o gol. Preferiu a Tita. A direita do gol de Moreira. Passou muito perto no poste direito do goleiro curitibano. Foi Tita. Foi mais uma grande chance desperdiçada pelo jogador do Flamengo Tita. Aí tá, aí passe de Adílio. E o complemento de Tita. Leomir. Não sabe para quem passar. Gardel. De graça, é do Flamengo, Nunes, na velocidade, vamos acompanhar com atenção esse ataque. Já na grande área, Gilson Paulino acabou perdendo-se totalmente no lance e Gardel tocou pela linha de fundo. É escanteio, é pela ponta direita. O jogador Reinaldo tomando posição para a cobrança. Chegando Carlos Alberto recebendo. Levantando, tirando Leomira. Gilson Paulino se complicou o cruzamento. Moreira. E ele não perde tempo. Aladim. Jogada de Rondinelli aplaudida pela torcida. Claudinho. Claudinho, camisa 16, faz aquecimento para entrar no time. Depois, dois jogadores estão em campo machucados. O Luiz Freire e o Aladim. Vai tocando bola o Flamengo. Recuperação do Curitiba, contra-ataque com Escurinho. Adílio. Andrade. Lançamento para Anselmo, a posição era legal, diz a arbitragem. Chegada de Tita, Gardel, o goleiro Moreira. Anselmo, na cabeçada, tirou o Gardel. O lance mais espetacular, quem sabe, desse segundo tempo. Evitando o quarto gol do Flamengo, o zagueiro Gardel. E o goleiro Moreira está machucado. Ele recebeu um chute, é claro, a menor intenção do jogador Anselmo da equipe do Flamengo. A entrada de Leomir. E o carrinho legal de Rondinelli. Tita. O Bandeira diz que está tudo normal. Anselmo. Fintado o goleiro. Pode sair o quarto gol do Flamengo. Anselmo para o Flamengo, é o quarto gol, quatro para o Flamengo, dois para o Curitiba, o um gol que pode visar o passaporte do Flamengo para a finalíssima do Campeonato Nacional. Adílio, Tita sendo atendido fora do gramado, Nunes, Carlos Alberto, Reinaldo. Carlos Alberto. Bom lance para Reinaldo. Não há ninguém na grande área, apenas Anselmo. Adílio. A sobra de Júnior. Uma cabeçada. Pegou completamente desprevenido o goleiro Moreira. Mesmo assim, teve condições ainda de voltar um pouco, já que estava bastante adiantado, e fazer a defesa. Veja outra vez, lance curioso. Aí está.
4 para o Flamengo, 2 para o Curitiba. Meu de calcanhar, escurinho. Gol do Curitiba, Luiz Freire, numa bela jogada. Uma jogada muito bem tramada pelo ataque curitibane. Curitibano, Luiz Freire, e perna direita. Uma bomba no meio do gol. Depois de uma série de cabeçadas, escurinho, Wilson Tadei. E o complemento de Luiz Freire. Aí está. Quatro para o Flamengo, três para o Curitiba no Maracanã. O gol de Luiz Freire foi feito aos 43 e meio. Jogador Tita, Júnior. Nunes. Quarenta e quatro agora, um minuto para terminar o jogo no Maracanã. No Beira Rio continua dois a zero, Atlético Mineiro. Começa quarta-feira a decisão do Campeonato Brasileiro. Flamengo e possivelmente Atlético Mineiro. É quase certo. A primeira partida seria no Mineirão e a partida de domingo, a finalíssima aqui no Maracanã. Uma semana de grandes emoções para o futebol brasileiro. Flamengo e Atlético Mineiro, finalistas do Campeonato Brasileiro de 1980. 44 e 20 segundos. Forma-se agora um batalhão de fotógrafos, repórteres, em frente ao túnel do Flamengo. Mas o Cotinho está fazendo sinal de que não pretende dar entrevistas por enquanto. Wilson Tadei. Esse é Wilson. Claudinho. 45 minutos. Tempo esgotado no Maracanã. Temos dois minutos de descontos. Caú. Vai levando Carlos Alberto. Reinaldo. 46. Apenas o tiro de meta para a equipe do Curitiba. Torcida no Flamengo com um grito na garganta guardado para gritar ao apito final do árbitro. Carlos Rosa Martins. Cobrança do escanteio, Tita. Final de jogo no Maracanã. Quatro para o Flamengo. Três para o Curitiba. Flamengo. Finalista do Campeonato Brasileiro de 1980. Jogando contra o Atlético Mineiro na próxima quarta-feira no Mineirão. A decisão do campeonato no próximo domingo aqui no Maracanã. Flamengo e...